me everybody it's dave juno the Menea's disease warrior how y'all doing so like yesterday with beta histine because a lot of people are talking about it and where to get it and this and that and all stuff so i made a video i did research on it so today i wanted to do research on epsilon and i did um probably could have done more but there really wasn't much more to find <laughs> um to be honest with you but it's spi-1005 um, and one of the things that I am going to tell you from the beginning is they have been looking at this drug for a very long time and not just, not just Meniere's. Meniere's didn't start till 20, 2019. Um, cause people have been posting this. Oh, look, Epsilon, they say it's going to do all this stuff, but that thing, it, but it's a screenshot and it's from 2019. I found it online. So... It's been looked at for diabetes, type 1 and type 2, type 2, um, lung inflammation. Um, these are just things I just couldn't write down anymore. Um, stuff, lung inflammation, diabetes, um, acute ischemic stroke. Um, they have been looking at it for a bunch of different things, even COVID. Okay. That's how they've been trying to get this past they were trying to get this past for a long time uh but then yeah when covid comes up they were trying to get it for covid um and for hiv hsvt hcvtv okay let me do that again hiv which we all know what that is that's really you know before you get diagnosed with aids for a lot of people hsv2 hcv in the zika virus so they've been trying it on that um, they've really been trying to get this thing passed for a whole bunch of different, different things. Um, bipolar disease, they did a study for bipolar and they can't get it passed, um, for any of that stuff. But I'm hoping what they found was just like with, um, well, butrin. And they were giving it to the Vietnam vets who were coming back home and they were depressed. Um, and they noticed that all of a sudden these guys who smoked heavy smokers weren't smoking anymore. And back then you could smoke in a building. So they were noticing these people weren't smoking anymore. And they're like, did you want to quit? And they're like, nah, I just don't feel like smoking. So that's when they did the test and they realized it was helping people quit smoking. So then they were giving it to people who quit smoking. Um who are quitting smoking and ran through the test to make sure that was what it was doing and this and that, and it worked. So hopefully that's what they did with Epsilon. They've, they've noticed that people's hearing was coming back. Okay, or tonight is going away while they were testing these other things. Um, but yeah, this they've been really trying to get this passed for a while. And um, they say it's on the fast track. Fast track means that it's a medication... That's unmet, unmet medication for chronic illness, like cancer, uh, Meniere's disease, things like that. It doesn't mean it's going to go through any faster, okay? Um, it still has to go through its trials and all this stuff. Um, and the only people I'm saying, seeing that saying it's going through a fast track of approving is Sound Pharmaceutical, who's the one doing this. Not the FDA. Okay, they say the FDA did, but we don't know what the FDA does. We don't even know what anything FEMA does in our country. Um, but that just means it's, an, it's, it's like a top priority, which is a good thing. Which is a good thing, because then hopefully if everything works out, it will come out um, maybe next year. It's not going to come out this year. I'll say that. Maybe next year, if not 2026. So... Maybe, hope. Oh, let's let's pray for that. If it's if it says it does what it does, but I think it's going to be more in line like beta histine. It's not going to work for everybody. Okay, because um, one of the things that Sound Pharmaceuticals put out was the hearing improved in fifty two percent of people. Well, that's a good thing. Okay, but it's low frequency hearing. It's not total hearing. It's not like you got a cochlear implant. Um, but it improved. Okay, and they also said that um, tinnitus improved in a lot of patients too. 
but it doesn't give a percentage. So I, to me, I don't know what that means. Okay, but there's no percentage given. And what I found too was um, the main thing in it is selenium. Okay, which means that makes sense. Epsilon, selenium. Um, in selenium, okay, is something when I first started working in copiers, fixing copier, copying machines. The photo conductor, the photo drum, you probably, if you worked in an office or something where you used a copier, you might have heard the technician say, hey, you need a new, new drum. Um, the drum coating, so it would get the charge. It's, 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 it's a whole process. I could do a video on it someday if somebody really wants to know how a copier works. Um, but let's say, you know, there's a charge coming from a wire. The drum accepts the charge and the light hits the drum and eliminates whatever. And then the toner sticks to the charged particles. The charged particles from the toner stick to the charge. The drum itself, the coating, is made from selenium. Selenium is toxic. Okay. Now, they're not giving you a very high dose of selenium in it, but it's very toxic. And you can get selenium to toxicity from it, which is nausea, vomiting, uh, nail discoloration, um, hair loss. That's why I'm bald, because I ate selenium drums. I'm kidding. That's not why I'm bald. Um, fatigue, irritability, and no wonder why a lot of copier techs had bad breath. Maybe they were eating selenium. I don't know. <laughs> but, um, yeah, it's a toxic thing. You know, I remember when we did have to replace one, which was rare because they lasted forever, like million, two million copies. Um, we had to go through, like, a special process to return them we had to put them in a special bag we had to send them to the cut back to canon um where i saw how they had to send them to um a hazard zone waste thing um and i knew that they spent a lot of time down manufacturer um and schools are actually working there for a week when they would borrow techs and whatever um so yeah that's i don't know about toxicity but i don't know about if i want to put something toxic in my body but i'm sure if it's in a low dose it's safe okay and that seems to be the the active thing in it so there might be something there but um the other thing nobody really talks about is the side effects from uh, epsilon there are side effects you know it's funny because people will post about it and say, oh yeah i hear better or oh my tinnitus is gone but they don't talk about possible side effects which they should have been gone over. But possible side effects are headache, uh, drowsiness, tiredness, you know, you're tired. And loss of alertness, which probably means like you're high. Um, which might explain the selenium. Okay. Um... But that's what I got. I mean, that's really all I could find. And anything else I found was through Sound Pharmaceutical. And, of course, they're going to boost their drug because um, they want to get it passed. And they, but, like I said, it's been, it's been tried for other things, and it didn't pass there. So, like I said, maybe they found what it actually was working what it was actually working on, and then started developing it for that. So, like I said, hopefully that's it. Okay, because it really would be nice if we had something that, you know, people didn't have to get surgery, people didn't have to, you know, buy beta histine from, from other countries and, 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 and things like that. It would be nice to have a one thing that works for everybody. But just from reading the percentages, um, the percentage on the hearing alone it's not going to work for everybody. I'm surprised that they would put it on a fast track where it's only 52%. Um, if it was 80%, then I could see, hey, man, you could, this is going to go out now. It's going to work for a lot of people. So I, my opinion is, I think the FDA is going to say, why don't you go back and work on it a little bit more and then come back. That's my personal opinion. Because 52% is good for us. 
It really is. But it's not enough. Because we want everybody to be able to have a treatment that works. That's what we want. Okay? And I know some people, yeah, but you know, blah, 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 and then, or they're at their, um, their wit's end, and I, I understand it. Um, you know, some days, literally, I don't feel I don't feel up to it. I'm not super desperate, but some days I do get desperate, okay? And it's because, you know, I'm going through everything I went through in the beginning with my right ear now, okay? Even the hearing is down to like it was in the right ear before I before I had the labradectomy. Well, maybe it's a little higher. It's probably about 30% because compared to like 5%. But still, if I take this one out, I can't hear myself talk. I barely hear myself talk. I can't hear anything that's going on in there, in the kitchen, in the dining room, in the living room, because I know my grandkids screaming right now. I know my grandson Sammy screaming <laughs> about something or talking loud. I can't hear anybody, okay? But if I put this back in, okay? Well, great, now they're quiet, but I can hear myself. And and if they started hooting and hollering, I could hear them. <laughs> so, oh yeah, there he goes. <laughs> I can hear him. So that's the thing I got for Epsilon. I will try to do a little bit more research, maybe make another video. But for now, that's it. And before we get the question, because I've got people who are questioning my videos about Epsilon SPI-1005, when I'm not even talking about that in the video, ask me when it's coming out. I don't know when it's coming out. Okay, I know about as much about when it's coming out as you do. I just wanted to make people a little bit more informed that they have been trying to use this thing for other things besides hearing because they've been really trying to get it passed. Um, you know, like I said, for diabetes type 1 and type 2, um, you know, COVID, HIV, cancer, some cancers. Um, depression bipolar they've really been trying to get it passed by other things and i'm sure selenium's in a lot of other drugs too um but it's probably a safe dosage i can't imagine them you know putting somebody in a in toxic shock for selenium so um and i know a lot of people take were taking lithium for uh depression or bipolar um i know my wife was in the beginning um so i i don't know so that's it okay you know the more informed you are the better off we all are okay now when this comes out will i want to try it um you know what i think i might i think i might if it could improve my right ear i would be happy okay but i'd probably still have to have the hearing aid in or get a cochlear implant because i am totally deaf on this side zero nothing um because the labyrinthectomy makes you deaf so i now I hear in the side, but all the sound goes into this ear. So that's it. And on that note, hey guys, have a great night. I hope this was informative for you. Um, and I kind of like doing these research videos and, and things like that and not really talking about feelings and how to get, you know, because let's face it, not everybody's going to understand. Can't keep repeating the same thing. So on that note, I'll talk to you all later. Take care. And, uh, Take care of each other, too. Remember, be kind to each other. Okay? Don't be me last week. Don't be me last week. Be kind to each other. Um, I had a day where I just wasn't me, and, <laughs> and I let it out on a video. And I really shouldn't have done that. So be, don't, don't be like I was that day. <laughs> okay? It was just that one day. It wasn't all the time. It was just that one day. Um, so just help each other, too. And um, with kindness and love and caring. And I'll talk to you all later. Bye.